Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. Welcome if you're watching on YouTube and hello if you're hearing us on the podcast. So today, as well as the usual news chat, we're going to be discussing a very prevalent issue at the moment, which is people of colour within climbing. So stay tuned for that chat coming about halfway through the show. But climbing news is first and Laura Rogora, uh, amazing pronunciation, she's never out of the news and she's back in it this week. Laura has returned to the Masone Crag in Arco, fresh off having done the 9A Plus Pure Dreaming Plus last week. She's posted on her Instagram account that she's sent underground a 9A. The route emerges from an enormous cave underneath the crag before climbing towards the light. Laura has been on a true rampage recently and this is another impressive tick for the 19-year-old Olympic qualifier. <laughs> Laura Regora just smashing Arco. She lives down the road, lockdown, uh, you know, lack of the Olympics. We discussed it all before, but whatever yeah. is happening uh, to her, she is on absolute fire. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like she's on the, like that kind of accelerated curve, you know, mm -hmm. when they kind of get really, really good and yep. they're just flying. Yeah. Um, I think that she's on that. She's not going to really stop for yeah. a while. And you know when a crag suddenly becomes popular again, like that Masoni crag has always been there in the back of sort of people's heads. But like, I think she's really bringing that crag to the attention of more people because it's such an outrageous place to go climbing. And uh just, just There's some amazing routes there, and and um, just the fact that you can like climb out the cave and then have more kind of technical climbing after that, yeah, is amazing. It's it's a bit of an iconic crag, though I'd say it is a bit, and it's it's intimidating because you walk down that hill, you get to the crag, and you're like, oh, there's this enormous crag, and you sort of look downwards, and there's this cave that just goes into blackness down below, and it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's like that that bold that problem especially is almost like this physical thuggy boulder problem upside down into a sport route. So um, yeah, it's just just awesome. What yeah. else can you say? <laughs> okay, uh, more news now from Belgium, where Anak Verhoeven has been sending hard. Anak Verhoeven has reported on her Instagram that she has climbed the first ascent of an 8C plus forward slash 9A route in Belgium. She climbed the route after five days of projecting and named it Craftio, an homage to climber Chloe Graftio, a Belgian climber who died 10 years ago whilst in the mountains at the age of 23, the same age that Anak is now. This is the 10th ascent of Anak of this grade or harder. So Anak back on it mm -hmm. after breakdown. She's doing well. Breakdown. After breakdown. She's all right. Do, should we send help? <laughs> after lockdown. <laughs> Sorry, Anak, you haven't broken down. No, after lockdown, she's uh, got straight back on it. She's very good at first ascents. Yes. She, she is. just like smashes out the first ascents. So like one of her 9A pluses was the first ascent. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, yeah, she's on it. As always, I'd say. So, um, Good play. Well done. Good yeah. play. Well done. Good. Yeah, nice. Um, Good and on this theme of, sort of comp climbers smashing it outside, Will Bosey, a British climber, he's retained that ridiculous pre-lockdown strength he had because he, he's back at it with another hard climb. Will Bosey has climbed the 8B plus Boulder Bewilderness at Badger Cove in the Peak District. It took Will just four attempts to send the boulder, having warmed up by climbing the crux. Will prepared meticulously for the climb, watching a series of videos and using photos to get himself ready for the moves. In hindsight, Will reckons he might actually have been able to flash the boulder. So nice one, Will. Um, I, I think in my head, I always see him as sort of like a lead climber. I think mainly yeah. because he doesn't like, you know, but boulders look like huge sometimes he doesn't look huge but yeah. I, f I forget how good a boulder that man is and i love the fact that he warmed he warmed up on the crux did the crux and was then like probably should have just given that a flash burn you yeah. know what i mean because he just he cruised it so uh yeah nice one will I remember like last time we saw him he was doing dead weights uh he was like bulking up for his speed climbing yes so he's obviously it, gotten stronger. he's getting a muscle he, he can do a 15 kilogram pinch hold on a lattice block which is super impressive. I've been dabbling with that. I've been playing with it since they mm -hmm. gave me one. That is hard. Like okay. I'm like at 10, just, 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 just. Yeah. So he's been doing a lot of that, a lot of lockdown training, just come back to the crags and yeah, he's back on it. You could give some like really good Chinese burns. He could do, yes. I've experienced it. It's vicious. Will, please don't do that again. <laughs> All right, next up, we've got news of another young crusher in Masone. Italian climber Philip Schenk has managed to climb two 9As at the Masone Crag near Arco. The 20-year-old managed to take down underground as well as making the 10th ascent of Pure Dreaming, the iconic cave climb of the crag. Two 9As by Philip Schenk, he's an Italian guy. It doesn't sound very Italian, Philippe. Schenk. Sounds more Austrian. But then I guess there's quite a bit of like that in Northern Italy, which is quite German speaking. Yeah. And there's quite a few German sounding people. Yeah, it's right, it's near the border, isn't it? Is it? Is Mikhail Piccolo Rallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarallarall
Uh, anyway, so yeah, Philip has been kind of on the like the youth World Cup scene for a while. Mm -hmm. I reckon he's one to look out for. To be honest, there's a whole bunch of guys from Italy who look very strong. Will be coming up in the future. I think uh, we should just go yeah. and camp at Massone and just set up a camera just in case. It's like everywhere is happening there. That crag is kicking off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I allow you to we, go. We can go. Cool. Yes. I'll bring a tent. Just a one man. Are you man. allowed to go? Are you allowed to go into Italy? Uh, I think it's well, yes, but it might be a bit of a great. I might not be able to get back. Okay, that's I, fine. I could ring you at the yeah. border and they'll be like, "Do you do you know Matt Greenman?" You can just be like, "No, no, no never heard of him. No, leave him there. He's fine." <laughs> um, I, I, oh God, I hate this name. Right? Okay, help me here, Alexi. I always say it wrong. Rubsov. Rubs, Rubstov. Rubstov. Every time someone... Okay, rubbed stuff. Okay, Alexi. Uh, he's known for his bouldering skills, of course, but he's just sent 9A. Alexi, who was the boulder world champion in 2016, has climbed the 9A Irdanit in Russia. He projected the route for five days, three days of that this spring. Alexi has been training hard during lockdown despite the lack of a climbing wall, and he's looking forward to travelling again once quarantine allows it. Great video on Alexi's Instagram of him underneath the table. But like, you know, we've, we've seen the table stuff, right? We get that. What what he does with this like pinch thing he's got going on is, is outrageous. On his table? Yeah, on, he's got his table thing and he's like pinching it underneath because he didn't have access to a climber. He was like somewhere in the middle of nowhere near, uh, near Moscow, like 200 kilometers outside of Moscow, doing lots of pull-ups, lots of stuff. And uh, yeah, another climber who's just come back and straight on it, crushing again. Is that his first 9A? I don't know. I, I doubt it. I think he's always like, I think of him as a boulderer, but he's definitely got that sport climbing pedigree. So I'm sure he sent more, but I don't know. I imagine. I imagine. Um, right next up, 8A.nu has reported uh, that Moritz Welts has, Moritz Welts, it's a great name, <laughs> has been getting very busy in the Franken Jura. <laughs> German climber Moritz Welts, who has previously done six 9As, has climbed two 9A routes in the Franken Jura. He managed to climb an Alex Magos route, nice, freshly baked, and a Marcus Bock route, working class. Of the latter route, he says in an interview with 8A.nu, too many tries in 2018, three tries today, doesn't feel like 9A, basically some easy warm-up climbing into an eight-move 8A plus boulder. It's a brave man who says that a Marcus Bock 9A route uh, is an easy warm-up yes. into an 8A plus boulder. I'm not sure I would say that around if I lived around Franken Europe. No, Marcus is not known for being chill with this kind of stuff, is he? I, didn't, I don't know that, but I, I think people uh, are scared of him. I was a little bit. You remember when we met him? Yeah, with, I thought he was pretty chill, but I wouldn't want to mess with him. I thought it was terrifying. He really? had this like, yeah, because he was at the Adam Ondrakat. He was this guru and everyone was kind of like, oh, it's Marcus over it's there. Marcus Block, yeah. yeah, he had that he hat legend. down. He was just super cool. He had all the tats on. I was like, I was very impressed by Marcus Block, but I would not want to piss that man off. Yeah, I, I totally yeah, agree. So. But maybe maybe Moritz. Moritz has got a, an equally cool name as Marcus Block. That's, it's a good point. If we're going on Morris, names Morris alone. Morris Welts. Yep. Is a great name. Uh, Marcus Bock is a great name. Yeah, but Marcus just set harder nine A's in the future. <laughs> if <Yeah>. you would, <laughs> your words, not mine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Marcus. Uh, that's it. Right. Uh, done. Na nine nine, nine counter. Uh, now, I'd like to apologise to our audiences because I messed something up last week, which was uh, Adam. Have you put, have, wait, 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 before we before we start, have you put the have you done it? Uh, no. You promised that you would last week. Lara Gora is still LR. <laughs> I think you should do it right now. Okay, I'm doing it right now. Here we go. I'm writing it in. If you're listening on the uh, on the podcast, apologies for this moment, but I'm writing. I, as you write, I'll, I'll talk to the podcast. Guys, okay. this is for the podcast. Um, we are sorry that the, the this has become more visual than it was before. It, before, when we were like either end of a Skype call, we could just talk our way through uh, nonsensically. Mm. Uh, but nowadays, we have to watch... Matt Groom writing a red pen on a bit of paper. So uh, for all you podcasters out there, I am going to talk you through what, Matt, what Matt's doing right now. He's scribbling uh, ferociously on a white bit of paper, trying to fill in the... Because before, he yeah. was too lazy to write the it full name. It was a spelling name. issue. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> I didn't want to make a mistake. But I've got an issue. I've got AT down. On on the women's 9A counter, AT. Who's AT? Who climbed 9A? I don't know. I don't know. Anyone? Anyone? Nobody. AT? AT. Uh, it'll Who come to me. Who is that? It'll That's terrible, isn't it? 
Uh, Anak Verhoeven. Is it not a V? Is, is it a T? A v? It looks like a T. I, I'll look it back. Okay, that might have to be the only one that waits. But um, yeah, so okay, that's one mistake corrected. Yes. But fine. the second mistake is the Adam Ondra. A few of you guys pointed out that I didn't put the second Adam Ondra 8C tick down. I only gave him one point, but he did two 8Cs. Yes, that's true. But someone was saying that he should get two points for an 8C. But of course, this is the new 8C plus counter. Yes. So 8C plus is one point and 9A is two points. Yeah. So we did it right. We just missed one off. So Adam Ondra is, is in the lead at the moment, beating Daniel Woods and Jimmy Webb and Drew Ruana. For all the podcasters out there, Adam, uh, Matt just uh, put another mark beside Adam's name. Yes. It was unbelievably uninteresting. It's not visual at all. So you're not missing out at all. So podcasters, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's, it's very unvisual. Actually, you, it's probably better just to hear the voice. Just the dulcet tones. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so that's the 9B counter done. Uh, we tried to make it as audio-friendly audio mm. as possible. I thought it was good. You know, um, BBC sports commentators during lockdown started commentating on everyday things because they missed commentating. Andrew Cotter. And you wonder what Olive is doing here. Only has to hold on. Going to the upright, though. High tariff with no opposable thumbs. High risk at this stage. And it's gone and Mabel takes it. Right, we said we'd have a, a conversation. Um, yeah. You want to kick things off? Yeah, I think um, we... In the last week, I'd say, obviously, I think we all know kind of what's been happening around the world. Um, there was obviously like uh, a big incident in America and that's kicked off a almost like a domino effect to kind of a, a whole bunch of kind of protests around the world. Uh, people protesting against kind of racism, uh, kind of in, in support of Black Lives Matter. Um, and we initially uh, put out on Black Lives Tuesday. Yeah, Blackout Tuesday. Blackout yeah. Tuesday last week. We put out like a uh, a black kind of Instagram picture. Like at the time, we we weren't sure, but we wanted to show our solidarity mm-hmm. in in what was happening. Um, but we, I felt like I didn't necessarily quite understand it back then, and I didn't understand what our kind of angle was, and not not what our angle was, but like what how we were going to react and I didn't want to just it seemed like a real reactionary thing just do something straight away but we want to show our solidarity and anyway, I was reading the comments under that photo today and people were kind of saying look you should you, you need to do more than this you need to mm-hmm. kind of show use your platform in order to to kind of speak out about these kind of issues um, and I think we just wanted to and, and I, I you know I'd say personally on this I, I wanted to kind of like get a feeling of like what we were going to say I didn't want to just say something straight away um, and in that week since then, I've kind of done a lot of reading and I've done a lot of thinking, been a lot of runs, like where I've thought about this kind of stuff. And I've, I've come to the conclusion that um, my initial reaction, and my initial reaction was, and it's probably the reaction of quite a lot of people was like, you know, this doesn't affect me. Mm-hmm. Like, this is an American problem. We yeah. live in Europe. Yeah. Um, and, and, and also almost like being slightly scared of it because it's like, you know, Essentially, I am a white middle middle class man. As am I, very. Yeah, and when we essentially are kind of part of the problem in in, in many respects, but I kind of was like initially was like, whoa, okay, trying to kind of distance myself. But the more I kind of processed it, the more I kind of came to the conclusion that within climbing, it is a very prominent issue. Um, like we go to a lot of climbing gyms, we go to a lot to climbing crags all over the world, not necessarily America, but lo- all over Europe, and. When you think about it, it is true that you do not see that many people of color within a climbing gym, at the climbing crag. It is predominantly a white middle class kind of sport. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the more I thought about it, the more I thought, wow, this is this is really prominent within our industry. Um, so I, I, you know, I started kind of looking into it uh, and, I, and, and there's a whole bunch of great resources online and, and, and loads of people at the moment are sharing this stuff, which is which is amazing, which is brilliant. Um, there's uh, a particularly good uh, film that we've watched a couple of times uh, called "The People Are Climbing," which is a an event video on Color the Crag, which is an event that runs in Alabama, and it's basically to kind of like celebrate uh, people of color climbing, kind of thing. So um, I think that uh, yeah, I think the discussion that we need to have and and. I don't know about you, but I, I feel kind of a responsibility as people working in the media, representing our community and representing our sport, like on on screen and like within the media kind of thing. There is a responsibility on our part to react to this situation 
in in a, in a positive way. Yeah, I, I think I think I know what you said at the beginning, which was like that 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 <clears throat> hesitation to talk about it because we're white, we're middle class. I feel quite removed from the issue in my personal life. It, yeah. Racism is not something I've experienced. I've definitely come into this sport from that white middle class background, and a lot of my friends who were climbing, especially back in the day in London, were of that category. Now, I, I think the res the responsibility thing is interesting because. There's, there's an argument where people would be like, look, the reason that you guys aren't showing people of color in climbing is because there aren't that many people of color climbing to make those videos of. That's a fair point. But I think the issue is, is that we need to be finding those people. Like we need to be looking deeper within the climbing community and actively seeking out those stories because, you know, we, we produce daily shows. Like, you know, that's, that's part of my job is we churn out daily shows. It's not that we're we're not choosing to do that. It's just we need to work harder to represent people and show it off and talk about the issues. Um, and I, I, you know, you, you, you know, you're, you're the, the head of commissioning for Epic TV. Now this has happened. Do you have you started to like think I need to commission more material? I need to find it. Like what what's the steps? Because for climbing daily, I'm thinking like how can we start to tell these stories? And it's it's. Um, well, I think that's it. It's, it's telling the stories and it's like it's talking. Like, I think. You know, you you look into you know these videos and and people what people have written. It's like it's it's conversation. It's like it's talking to them. It's like finding out their side of the story and and represent representing that within you know articles, within videos and stuff like that. I think it's it's a conversation that that just needs to kind of keep going and, and developing and and growing. And um, I, I think f like for us, we we that initial reaction is is that like because you know we there's there's not many people people of color climb, uh, climbing in where we go climbing kind of thing mm -hmm. so how can we kind of be part of the problem but the, 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 the you know we are kind of part of the problem i would say and that is that's a that's that's the thing that we what everyone has to admit kind of thing um you know and and try to imagine what it's like for a person of color to go into a climbing gym which is just all white people. Something that we kind of take for granted when we go into a gym, that we don't even think about it. It's not even an issue. Mm -hmm. But whereas for that, for for a person of color, it's it's maybe not 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 as easy in order to do that. Um, and you know, the only way that you can understand that is by reading and educating yourself. Um, I there's there's a lot of good uh, stuff on Instagram at the moment. They have like a resource of articles of videos that they have like linked in their kind of website and it's literally just like a google's doc of mm -hmm. like the ways that you can kind of educate yourself on that on on these kind of issues um i would also say follow black girls boulder uh color the crag um emily taylor like uh tailored fit coach is a really good one to follow mm -hmm. as well by following that and making yourself aware of that situation within our climbing community a community that you know, we like to think is like welcoming and, and open and, and, you know, really like empowering people to kind of like achieve their goals kind of thing. I think it's important for us to understand that it is something that we need to work on yeah. as, a, as a community. I read a few things on Instagram that kind of got me was uh, <clears throat> comments people being like, we don't want apologies. You know, it's not like you need to say sorry, you just need to start doing something about mm -hmm. it. And I think we are in this unique position of having... You know, we're gatekeepers to a lot of things. Like we are a, a big climbing media channel and people see us, you know, the media that we're putting out, people are absorbing and that's what's affecting people. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that responsibility is is important to take seriously. And it's it, it's it's a bit of a mind mess because it's like, okay, look, I, we, we, we have not, I'm not sitting here being like, I'm so sorry for what has happened, but how do we change it? Like, how do we go, right, we want to put these films out so people can see them move forward, and just just get people kind of climbing more and feeling more comfortable and just exploring those stories and that's it's a big responsibility we have as well which is scary in a yeah. way like I, I think it's okay to say that like it's it's a big responsibility that we have to do this and it's i guess gradually working out how to do it and and being active with it yeah absolutely i think like uh you know the, so many so many positive things about the climbing industry i think uh the and the way that things have been dealt with in the past can be used as kind of a framework as, and how to kind of deal with issues, these issues. I think like, you know, looking at our, our audience is 98% like male mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and we've recognized that over the, over the past, but like, it's still something that we need to kind of work on. Um, you know, so, and you look at the industry, the climbing industry, 
uh, and we are unfortunately a good reflection of the fact that it is very male dominated. You mm -hmm. go to like a lot of climbing gyms, a lot of them are kind of male run, um, and you know, kind of within the climbing industry, a lot of the higher up kind of like uh, positions are held by by men. So there's just that kind of not quite understanding of like kind of male female kind of relationships within climbing but then also obviously you know people of color you add that into the mix as well it's it's there's there's a lot to learn basically mm -hmm. i think within within climbing um and it is a relatively new sport so which kind of plays into our advantage in the fact that we're young we're adaptable we're flexible we're kind of moving we can kind of really take on these kind of values and and really move forward with them this is the beginning of a conversation. There's a lot more to say about this. There's a lot of action to take place. Yes. Uh, and of course, you guys are going to be commenting down below. Let us know your thoughts and feelings of this. Be nice. It's YouTube. It's not always the nicest place to have a conversation. Let's be gentle with each other and let's have these important discussions. It's important though. And have a real conversation, like for sure. Like don't, I mean, you know, be nice, but don't hold back. Yeah. Yeah. Vent, but nice, nice vent. Okay. Is that nice okay? Yeah, yeah that's, right. good, that's good. Uh, medias. Medias. On the Epic TV website. Okay, so just first up, I want to talk about um, the, uh, the uh, People of Climbing, which is a video that I just spoke about. Um, it's really, really worth like having a watch. It's embedded on the epictv.com uh, website. We haven't got teaser because we can't use it, but please go and watch it. It's really, really important. It's really interesting. It's really, it's fascinating and it's, it's eye-opening. Uh, so go and watch that. That's on the Epic TV website in the embed section. Nice. Next um, up. Yeah, Climbing Daily next up because we uh, yesterday we released a video on Matt Phillips, British power climber, Epic TV athlete. It's a little look at his life to introduce you guys. If you don't know Matt, check out this mini teaser. My scariest moment was uh, this high ball in Mount Evans Park. It's called Timeline. It's only like V2, but it's sort of like in the in the zone of not wanting to fall off when you get to the top. And this last move is sort of a, it's a lunge from, it's a slab climb all the way up, but there's a sort of a bad hold on the right that I don't really properly have. I'm sort of trusting my left foot completely. And then it's sort of a lunge, but not for the lip, just over the lip is sort of a, a nicer hold. So you go for that and like you sort of hit the lip and like just keep going, hoping that you can get to the to the last bit, grab it and then pull over the top. So I guess that, that was a pretty sort of, scary-ish moment you know it's it's pretty sketchy i mean i had to do it like five times for the uh for the film as well so i got quite quite good at the movie but the first time was quite you know quite nerve-wracking for the podcasters out there uh that was a thing with matthew phillips you just already said that but maybe they didn't get it maybe they just didn't understand it that's true they just what were the visual music? aspects of that interview uh, they would have just heard. Actually, no, it's a talky interview, so they probably talky would interview. have would have achieved it. Is, is Matt talking about like is, is some fun questions? There's some serious questions. It's just to get to know Matt uh, as an athlete and uh, and as a climber. Absolutely. Uh, comment of the week. Uh, shop stuff. Shop stuff. Sorry. Uh, alpinism in it. Alp it's all Alp about the big mountains. Alpinism in it. In it. Yeah. In it. It's kind of like uh, getting affirmation, and it comes from ain't it. Also, isn't it? So it's become. In it, it's obvious. In it, yeah. We we chat about alpinism this week because there's loads of alpine deals on the Epic TV shop, and you might think it's summer coming. Why do you need to talk about alpine gear? Well, there's a huge amount of alpine climbing in the summer. You need a different kind of kit set up. It's it's kind of more accessible than winter climbing. Uh, there's a gear show coming out on Friday, all about packing, how to pack for it. There's loads of deals, so go onto the Epic TV shop, link down below, and grab yourself some bargains. What's your favourite alpine uh, bit of equipment? Uh, it's something I don't own, which is a Grivel North Face Tech Carbon, one of their Isaacs things. Right, is it super light? I just want it. It just looks sexy. It's like 300 quid, but oh. So we, we put out a uh, an episode uh, on Monday, which was like three Alpine moments, mm -hmm. well, three Alpine videos kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and the first one was a Scottish winter climbing with Tim Emmett and yep. Ian Parnell, who are both legends of that aspect. But what I kept thinking was when I watched it was like, I would I would drop I would drop the ice axe. Like no, no, no yeah, because he hasn't got leashes it. on or anything. But no, just... no leashes on it, and he's like scratching around yeah, and this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, I'd like do it, and it'd slip off, and I'd fall off, and I'd like, yeah, I'd drop it definitely. I like that video because there's three examples. It was like Scottish winter climbing, which is extreme. It was then us playing around in Chamonix, which was less extreme but still exposed. Yeah. And then we had the moose's tooth, uh, which was Mark and Janelle Smiley Ultimate exposure. Ah, oh, dude, the, the snow mushrooms on the top of that thing, horrendous. Go check that as well. I'll, I'll stick a link in. There yep. you go. That's a lot of fun. Comment of the week. Comment of the week. 
Ready? Ready? Go. Cock, cock, comment. Oh, you were going for up there, but you didn't. Of, of the, the week. week. I was Very more good. going for like chopped up audio. You know, like a like a you know when a DJ does that that what's it called? Scratching. Scratch, is it scratching? <laughs> yeah, a fricky fricky fresh thing. I was going for fricky fresh on the cook cook cut. You're so current. Man. Yes, I am, aren't I? Mm. Um, my comment of the week is from Hayu23, and he says, Has this episode been released as a podcast? The reason I'm bringing this up is because it is always a podcast at the moment. We're taking the audio from this new show, if you're watching it on YouTube, we're putting it on the podcast. So if you're in a car, uh, you want to listen to us. If you're running out and you want to hear this conversation every week, about Thursday or Friday, the podcast goes up. Big shout out to all the show. podcasts. Yes. Is that what they're called? Uh, I don't know, but that's what a podcast I used to listen to, you called them the podcasts. Podcasts. But maybe that's just a bit of copying. The podcast, pod, pod, podcasters, Pod marmots. We pod, are in the Alps. Pod marmots. <laughs> Doesn't roll off the tongue quite so well. True, maybe we'll get that. But anyway, big shout out to the pod, podcast people. Mm -hmm. Podcast people. Pod that's marmots. It's quite nice. Uh, big up to yourselves. Okay, big up. Big up is just like, yep, yeah, nice to see you, man. Big up. It's like, um, hail. Hail, like they were doing Roman times. I actually prefer listening to this as a podcast. Than you I listen do. to yourself back? I Sometimes I like listen just to see what it's like, okay. uh, just see that what the other side mm. is like. I, I've done a similar thing and it's embarrassing because if your phone is linked to your car and someone mm. else gets in it, occasionally it pops up with my own voice. Yeah. So when someone gets in the car, it sounds like I've just been sitting there listening to myself. And what, how do you get out of that situation? I say, no, no, I just clicked on it to share the link on Instagram, honest. But sometimes I've Whilst listened. you were driving, that's dangerous, Matt. Well, you know, multitasking. Don't do that park first. Yeah, don't do that. No. That's dangerous. <clears throat> Right, my one is uh, ethics. I hate people that come and blast music on the route next to me. I go to get away from. I go. I go to get away from all that. That's from Water Goat. He's got a great name. Is it like Water Goat or? No, no, it's Water, water Goat. Water, right, He's a Water right, Goat. Right. Uh, but no, I brought this up because I think we should have a show about ethics. I tried to push it last week. Yes. Matt tried to push it off on someone else. It's, it's not what I want. I to think push. we should get Matt to do it. What do you I, think? I, I would want to do it, but I want to go to the UK and I want to film like the trad ethics to start with. So I think that's important because that is like the birth of it. It's where all the ethic forum debates happen. I want like I want an old school English trad climber to come in and shout at me for head pointing stuff. Okay. So I, I really set that up. We yeah. We'll, I'll set. I'll, I'm on. I'll it. I'm give. On it. Um, what's his name? Cool. Stevie Haston. Stevie Haston. I feel like we're giving Stevie Haston a lot of airtime recently about how scared I am. About... I mean, he's a legend. He's, he's a also legend. very scary. Yes. Let's get him along yeah. and watch you head point and shout at you. Okay. And I'm gonna, see I... if your performance gets better or not, because that's actually negative reinforcement. And let's see if that works. Yes, it doesn't. But if yeah. anybody is wondering what I mean by negative reinforcement, check out last, last week's, week's show. Uh, it was very week's negative show. reinforcement. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout, throughout yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm going to drop a bit of ethics. Last week I dropped some ethics. All right. Go then. Let's, I'm going to drop some ethics. Yeah. I have no issue with head pointing hard trad routes. I think the ground up approach is not progressive. And if someone's going to die on a route, I have no issue with them shoving a top rope on it. Just there we go. For the uneducated trad climbers like myself, let us know what uh, head pointing is. Head pointing is when you practice a route on a top rope. So usually you have to. The ethics is that you ground up it. So you look at a route, you do it from the ground, you work it out as you go. If it takes some falls, cool. You pull the ropes, you go back to the bottom. My issue is with hard trad routes, you're progressing the sport. Yep. What's wrong with head pointing something that's so dangerous someone's going to break their legs or even die? I've got no issue with that. And who, who's got issues with that? Stevie Huston. People have issues with this. I've had arguments in bars. So basically they just want to sit, climb ground up. Yeah, like the pure way. So you work it from the ground up. Yeah, so you work it ground up, which I think is fine to a certain point, but I think... Like there are so many Indian face, for example, you know, very, very scary E9 death routes. People head point, people practice it. And I think that's OK. But there are people there at the side of the crowd going. There are people uh, who will be shaking uh, their heads, here. forum typing hard. Yeah. I mean, I would, I think we should explore this. OK. I definitely think we should. We're going to explore this. it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. We're working on a few other bigger projects. An but opinion piece where we just like go and find out the people that don't like this stuff. OK. And we maybe kind of cause a fight online you want me to cause a f online fight right okay and then we get the people to meet this is gonna be one of those things where like you're gonna be behind the camera whoever's gonna be behind the camera is gonna be behind the camera safe laughing at me irritating <laughs> stevie <laughs> Aston. i know what's gonna happen here but if you want to see that let us know um you let us know last week you were keen with it but continue to let us know and we might do it nice okay uh, that is it. That's it. Thank that you. That was a mammoth show. It Apologies was. for everyone. To, uh, to be honest, I'm always intrigued by um, how, if people like the length of a show or not. Do you know what I mean? Because these have got bigger, haven't they? These have got bigger. 
and we're not sure if they got better, but they got bigger. Yeah. And I wondered if, like, we're just rabbiting on now. Yeah. Let us know down below if bigger is better, uh, and then we'll we'll read those comments next week. I actually shared this with a friend of mine the other day who doesn't climb, and he actually said he, he said the words, "If I was into climbing, I might quite like it." But he didn't. But he doesn't like climbing, right. so he's not so he that doesn't bothered. like it. Fair but enough. He just you know, it's negative reinforcement feedback. Yeah. Well, well done for being rubbish today. Yeah, you too. You were terrible. I think that was probably one of your worst performances. Thanks. You were boring. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you for watching. That's it. See you later. See you next week. Bye. Bye.